Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Techie Code Buddy. I hope you are doing extremely well. And your placement preparation is also going well. Well, first of all, guys, if you are new to this channel or haven't subscribed this channel till now, then do consider subscribing this channel as this really motivates me to make more such content for you and for your placement preparation. All right. Also, guys, don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you will never miss any update from my channel. You can also join our Telegram community. The link for the same is given in the description box there i used to share multiple resources for your placement preparation right so let's start with the question that was asked recently in exchange exam so let's find out the logic of this code and the code part of this so let's start with the question now the question is there are n farmers and each farmer owns x number of land find the sum of lands owned by all the farmer one is indexing will be there the number of land x is the ZOR operation of the land owner by his previous farmer and his number. So here as we can find out that x is not given to us, right? We have to find out the x. We have to find out the x. That means the total land that is owned by each and every farmer. Okay, so we have to find out it externally. And how we can find out? By finding the x and how we can find out the x by taking the XOR operation of the land owner by his previous farmer and his number. Right. Now here is the input format. B will be only given only one input in one line that is N. The number of total farmers in that area. Now we need to find out the total number of lands owned by N farmers. Right. So suppose there is N and here are some constraints as well. N is less than equal. Sorry. N is greater than equals to 1. Okay, this will be the constant. And n will goes is less than, I think, 1000 or 100 constant will be there. But this constraint, I remember properly, that it was n is greater than equals to 1. So, n cannot be 0. Now, if n is 1, so in that case, what we will do, there is no any previous farmer, right? So, in that case, XOR will be 1 only, right? XOR will be 1 only. So, we will be taking 1. Now, if n equals to 3, that means this is farmer number one, this is farmer number two, and this is farmer number three. So what we will do, we will start our traversing from here. So that we can take the back element or the previous one element, right? So we will so we will start our traversing from the second element. As here in this question, the array index starts from one. So we will traverse the array from two, right? So what we will do, first of all, for this, what we need to do, we need to find out the XOR of this and this, right? So, 1 XOR 2. The land that is owned by farmer number 1 was 1 only. So, 1 dot the current number of farmers. So, this is 2. So, what it will return to us? Now, as we all know that this is XOR and this is a bitwise operator. So, we need to convert the integer into binary first. So, let's convert 1 into binary. So, it will be 0, 0, 0, 1 and 2, 0, 0, 1, 0. All right, now let's find out the ZOR according to 8421. I used to convert them using 8421 Pala code. So, now how does ZOR work? If both the values are different, so in that case, ZOR return as 1. So, it will return as 1. It will return as 1. And here, both the values are 0, 0. So, it will return as 0. So, what it is actually? This is 3, right? So, this is having 3. And here, the count of total farmers are 3. Now, 3 is stored here in our vector array. Already 1 was there, right? Now 3 is also stored here. Now, we will check for this. Okay, so we will find out the previous land. So previous land is 3. Dot current element or we can say the current farmer count. So it is also 3. So 3 is or 3 will return as 0. So it will return as 0. So we will add 0. Now we will find out the sum of these. So the sum of these will be 4 only. So that is how we are getting our answer. I hope it makes sense. I hope it is clear to you. And I will use vector array to solve this question. Okay. And it will be super easy for us. Okay. And guys, if you understand the logic properly, so you can implement that logic in any of the programming language. Programming language doesn't matter. The thing that really matter is you need to understand the logic and you will be able to implement the logic. Okay. So let's start with the code part now. So let's write down the code of it. First of all, what we need to take, we need to take the user input as the count of farmers. Okay. And by default, our vector array, or we can say our uh, 
farmers count is one okay at least one should be there so we will be taking one by default okay so we will name it as v this vector array or we can say dynamic array and what we will do we will insert one as by default value push back all right okay now we will traverse the array from the element number two i is less than n and i plus plus okay and here we need to take the we will insert the result of xor of b dot back means the previous element xor the current element or the current value of farmer and here what we will do we will initialize the sum as zero and then we will be using a for each two and here we will be traversing this iterator over our complete vector okay and sum assign sum plus x at the end of the day it will print sum all right so now let's run this code for various test cases so if n equals to one so in that case what it is returning so as we can see from here that if n equals to one so it is returning is one so let's take if n equals to three so in that case what it is returning to us it should return four okay so it is returning four now let's see how this code is working here right so let me take the pen okay so this line is for taking farmer input okay so from here we will take the farmer input now here we are taking the dynamic array or we can say factor array because it will be super easy for us to solve this kind of problem and also we don't know what can be the maximum size of our array so we will take the vector array it will be super easy to access the previous element as well right so as the array index starts from one and we will be traversing the array from the second element so what we will do i am trying to dry run this input output for this right so initially our vector is containing one now we will come here i value is equals to two and here n equals to one all right so we will compare whether two is less than one so this condition is false we will come out of the following we will come out here initially the sum is zero and we will iterate the x over complete vector so in our vector only one is there so it will iterate so it will assign sum assign sum plus x initially the sum was zero and x value will become one only so one so it will return us one so one will be the output of this so let's run this so let's run this test case for the same condition or we can say the same line of code by default our vector is containing one and we will start from here here n value is equals to three first of all we will comparing them that two is less than three so the condition is true we will come into the for loop what we will doing we will taking the p dot back zor i p dot back means we will be taking the zor of previous one that means one one zor two it will return us three now i value will be increment and three will be stored in this vector right and here i value will be incremented and it is now three so here we will check for the condition three is less than three so this condition is false we will come out of the for loop now initially the sum is zero here we will be iterating over the complete vector x and here we are iterating over so first of all sum value is zero plus what will be the first value of x that means the first element of our vector array so the first element is one there so it will be one now again the loop will go here and it will increment the count of iterator and it will two now the second element is three so it will add one plus three so it is four now so it has been iterated over the whole array and the last sum value is four so four will be returned to there right i hope it makes sense i hope it is clear to you so yeah that was all about this code also guys i will try to attach the python code in pin comment to make sure to check the pin comment i hope the question was clear to you i hope the logic is clear to you so but if you still have doubt then you can ask me on telegram or you can ask me in the comment section as well so and i will leave this code and the question in the telegram community so make sure to join so yeah that's all for today from my side we will meet in the next video till then bye bye and take care